Welcome, my name is Dale Symington. I'm the Measurement Application Product Manager for Schneider Electric. And today we're going to take a look at how you change the RAM battery in a 4203 multivariable transmitter with the built-in flow computer. So first of all, we recommend that the battery be changed in an environment where you can do proper static protection measures. And uh, generally it would be a bench environment in the field it's a very difficult operation to do. So to have the necessary tools ready and uh, we'll show you how it works. So here we are with the 4203 and you can see that this unit is operational uh, in this case sitting on a cable and I'm going to unscrew the uh, cap for the display side so you can better or more easily see the display and you can see that the unit is running and it's displaying some basic information. We don't have too much happening now because it's obviously not connected to a process. So one of the things we need to do in preparation is to make sure we have the appropriate tools available and uh, anti-static procedures. So this is an anti-static mat which has been grounded and connected to that is a wrist strap which makes sure that uh, I don't have any static buildup when I'm uh, working on the boards or the transmitter. So the first step is to power down the transmitter in this particular case. So I'll just remove the power. And then the way to get into the unit to gain access to where the battery is, is to remove the display. So the, if there is a display, and that can be done by just rotating the display slightly in the counterclockwise direction. Removing the display, there is a ribbon cable that's attached to it and so we can gently unplug the ribbon cable from the back of the display. And now we have access to this uh, plastic plate on which all of the internal or most of the internal electronic boards are attached. So there's two screws that we have to remove in order to uh, remove these boards and gain access to the battery. So with that you can use a Phillips or, or plus type screwdriver and remove those screws. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it I'm going to back these screws out all the way. And there's a couple of little tabs on this plastic plate that allow you to get a hold of it with your fingers. So it just removes like this out of the housing. And we have to be careful that we don't do or, or place undue stress on the cables that are attached to the boards. So you can see that we have a number of ribbon cables attached and at this point we can actually see the battery. So the best way to do this is just kind of rest this in place. There is uh, for shipping purposes a tie wrap which holds the battery in place. This is the battery right here. So we can uh, just clip that off and I recommend just clipping both sides, removing the tie wrap. Now we have access to the battery. So in this case, uh, the, the battery is not quite flat against the board. There is, there is a couple of small components underneath it. So it's normal to have it move slightly like that. And it also makes it easy to get a small screwdriver under the rim and just gently pry up the battery and remove it. So we now have the battery removed. There's a couple of, of sockets there that the, the new battery goes into. So notice the back of the battery, the, uh, the two pins are offset. You have one at the outside of the battery, one on the inside of the battery, and so when you go to place the battery on the board, it's important to make sure you get those in the correct positions 
uh, in the sockets. Okay, uh, it is possible to uh, try and align it backwards, but uh, uh, if you observe the position of the pins, it becomes pretty obvious how it has to go back in. So what we do is we grab the new battery, we insert it carefully into the sockets to make sure it lines the pins line up properly so we're not shorting the battery on anything and then we just press down and the battery's in place. You can verify it by just kind of squeezing it with your fingers and you'll find that it actually takes a fair bit of force to begin removing it from the sockets and so that's good. So that's really all there is to it. It didn't take very long to replace the battery so we should still be able to see everything running once we put this back together because we won't have lost uh, anything out of the memory. So when we're placing the boards back into the housing you have to be careful not to pinch cables and um, since we really haven't disturbed the cables very much it's not too hard and it aligns very easily because there's notches in the board that go over the uh, threaded boss for the screws inside the housing so it, it, it just lines up automatically quite well. So insertion back into the housing and you can kind of feel it when it slides over the boss and once you get it in that far then it's easiest just to lay it down. All we have to do is do up those two screws which hold that plate in place. We'll just snug those up they don't need to be uh, extremely tight, just snug enough to uh, hold it in place and so the, the screws don't work their way out. So now that we've got the boards and back plate inserted back into the housing and we've tightened down the screws, we need to reconnect the display module. So we can do that by plugging in the ribbon cable and it is keyed so it's obvious which way it goes into the uh, connector on the back of the uh, display board. So we can just plug that in like so. Uh, you can feel when it when it uh, mates properly with the uh, connector and then uh, we just carefully bring that over and uh, reinsert the display and it's just the opposite procedure to when we removed it. So we can insert the display. You can feel it when it when it clicks into place and then you turn it slightly to lock it and everything's good. So one of the things to be aware of in regard to the battery is that it is uh, feasible to set up a register assignment so that you can monitor in software the battery voltage or monitor the uh, battery voltage through the host and set up alarms on it. So the battery voltage shows up in the register as a, uh, a value which is a hundred times the actual voltage. So for instance the, these batteries are 3.6 volt batteries so you'll see a new battery show up as a value of 3700 and uh, if that value gets down to let's say 3000 which is 3 volts that's an indication that the battery needs to be changed. So it's feasible to set up alarms so you can be notified whenever a unit has a battery that's getting low enough that it's going to need uh, replacement very soon. So that's what we would recommend as a, as a normal part of uh, installation and setup in terms of your software is to look at including the alarms on the battery voltage. So thank you very much. I hope that helps with uh, changing batteries on the 4203. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact our technical support department. And we'll see what we can do to help you out. Thank you.